Hello boys and girls. So today we're doing something a little bit different in Mrs. Bartunek's art room. Um, we will not be creating an art project in this video. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to share um, a book with you. One of my friends, one of my very good friends, um, loaned me this book and I thought that it would be wonderful if you guys could also hear it. So this is going to be um, a story time. I'm going to read this book and if you're interested in it, you can continue watching the video or if you want to make a project, you can go back to the channel and you can choose something else to work on. That's totally fine. Now this book, um, this is called Jimmy Sounds Like a Rainbow and this book um, is all about Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix was a very famous guitar player, um, quite arguably one of the greatest guitar players of all time. I might be a little biased, but he, he was a very well known and very successful guitar guitarist um, for a band. And this book kind of explores, you know, his origins and where he came from and how he did what he did. So we're gonna read it together now, all right? Okay, so Jimmy Sounds Like a Rainbow. Electricity ripped through the air. A lightning flash lit up the room. Thunder rocked the house. Jimmy's hand jumped and a rainbow of colored pencils went tumbling to the floor. Outside, Ran began trickling off the roof and clinking into the metal gutter. Drops bounced onto the windowsill. A breeze rippled the glass chimes on the porch. For a moment, Jimmy thought he heard a woman's name being blown on the wind. Jimmy grabbed his one string ukulele. He could play only simple tunes, but now he had a new idea. He pulled the string and let it snap back, tapping gently with his finger up and down the neck to get just the right notes over and over until he could play the sound of raindrops singing as they fell. After the storm, Jimmy stepped out onto the porch of the boarding house where he and his father lived. Down the street, a child was laughing, squealing like a clarinet on one of dad's big band records. A truck engine backfired, pounding like a bass drum as a neighbor's rake played snare against the sidewalk. A dog yodeled. A siren wailed in the distance, and a bird rattled off a string of high, wild notes. The sounds of life were calling out, and Jimi Hendrix wanted to answer all of them. Terry and Potato Chip waved from across the street. They loved Jimmy's drawings, the funny stories he told, the way he could imitate guitars and trumpets with his mouth and hands. And they never teased him about his worn out clothes and wild hair, the way some kids did. Or because he was always moving from one part of town to another when dad was out of work. They were the three musketeers, best friends for life. Down at the record store, the boys checked out the top 10 hits each week. Crazy about music, they would chatter for hours about the latest rock and roll songs. Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and B.B. King. The airwaves were sizzling with excitement, new sounds and rhythms. Sometimes, Jimmy and his friends bicycled down to a lake, a magical place of deep green leaves and dark purple shadows. They'd throw rocks in the water, listening to them plop and gurgle as they sank. All around there were birds singing, bees buzzing, and breezes whistling through the trees. Above the clouds, airplane engines droned and whirred. With every sound, a color 
glowed in Jimmy's mind. Blue was the whoosh of cool water splashing over the rocks. Orange and red, the crackling of a campfire. Green, the rustle of a thousand leaves. At home, Jimmy drew and painted for hours. He filled pages with sleek, finned spaceships, knights on horseback, fierce Indian chiefs, and castles in the clouds. A teacher even let him cover the blackboards once with chalk drawings of Mexico in bold, blazing yellows, purples, and reds. Jimmy's imagination was on fire and a tune was always playing in his head. At night, he'd listen to dad croon along with gospel, jazz, or blues records on the old phonograph. A song by Muddy Waters with its wailing guitar and harmonica set off fireworks in his mind. Sweeping up his room one day, Jimmy stopped and held the broom in his arms. He strummed on the bristles, sliding his fingers back and forth along the wooden handle. Was this what it felt like to hold a real guitar? To swing it up and down? To make music while you sang? On the radio, Elvis Presley's hit Hound Dog shook the speaker. Elvis was the king twisting and shouting to the beat of rock and roll. Jimmy strummed the broom again. Pieces of straw went flying into the air as he wiggled his hips like Elvis and sang his heart out for an imaginary audience screaming fans. Sitting on the porch one night, Jimmy watched as the landlady's son cradled a wooden, worn guitar in his lap and began to sing. The man's voice was dark and smooth like velvet. The blues, they is a lonely sound, like the whistle of a train, full of tender feelings and pouring down like rain. Notes spun from the strings, flickering in the air like fireflies. Jimmy's eyes shone. He could feel the music tingling in his fingertips. When the landlady's son offered to sell his guitar for $5, Jimmy begged dad to buy it. On a small transistor radio, Jimmy tuned his favorite songs and learned them note for note. From dad's old blues records, he soaked up the gritty sounds of guitar masters. Now, he had an instrument of his own. Night after night, he'd sit alone in his room, plunk, plunk, plunking along for hours. He practiced and practiced, training his ears and his hands, and each day he got a little better. Before long, Jimmy could play the guitar while Potato Chip sang or jam with Terry as his fingers tickled the keys of an old piano in the basement. Every note, every chord was like a new color for Jimmy. He had a rainbow of sounds at his fingertips, and he wanted to paint the world with them. <clears throat> Soon, 
Jimmy played well enough to join a local band. But when he first performed on stage, the screaming saxophone, pounding drums, and rocking piano drowned out his old wooden guitar. He felt invisible. If he wanted to be heard, he'd need a louder guitar, an electric guitar. Money was tight, but dad could see what music meant to his son. It may have been the cheapest model, but to Jimmy, his new guitar was pure gold. With the flick of a switch, Jimmy's life was electrified. Now he could plug into an amplifier, turn up the volume, and hold his own in the band. Practicing at a friend's house one day, Jimmy heard the amplifier making strange and eerie sounds. Out of the speaker came buzzes and whistles, fuzzy hissing, and a raspy humming. Strumming the guitar made the noises shift and change. By turning knobs and stretching guitar strings, Jimmy found that he could play with the different sounds. He ran his fingers up and down the neck, tapping and scraping, plunking, sliding and picking. Then a smile flashed across his face. Suddenly, the room filled with a rocket's roar, crashing waves, the buzz of swarming bees. Jimmy was finally painting with sound. Like no one before him, Jimi Hendrix taught his guitar to sing, scream, laugh, and cry. He learned to use it as an artist uses paint, creating new worlds with the colors of sound. To the heart and soul of the blues, he added the restless energy of rock and roll. His playing became bold as lightning wild as the waves, free as the wind through the trees. Dressed in the colors of the rainbow, he played for audiences far and wide, joining fiery sounds with tender feelings and painting the world with his songs. Don't let nobody turn you off from your own thoughts and your own dreams. All right, boys and girls, that was our story. Jimmy sounds like a rainbow, all about Jimi Hendrix. I hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye guys.